Welcome back inside the den. I hope you guys are having a great week. We're back inside the den to talk some Mountain West football. With me, as always, is Chris Murray. Chris, how are you doing? Uh, I'm in my vacation wear. So yes. I leave for Mexico in a couple of days. So uh, I won't be doing inside the den for a couple of weeks. Uh, I don't know if you're going to carry it on, but uh, I'm getting in the Mexican spirit as we're going to Cancun. I think you're Mr. Cancun. Didn't you tell me that Mr. one time? Yeah, Mr. Cancun, like Pitbull. You know? Okay. <laughs> well, you have to give me some tips, but that, that's why I'm dressed like this. I'm also kind of dressed like this because I have my annual physical later today. Yeah. So I like to dress light, so I weigh yeah. a little bit less, so my numbers are solid. It's so. a good tactic. That, that's honestly. why I'm dressed as I am. No, it makes sense. Okay. But Metsco, great vacation spot. Looking forward to it. Um, dog days of summer. It's been hot out here in Reno. Some fires. It's going to be hot there, up. too. And it'll be uh, just as hot in Cancun, but, yeah. you know, you'll have a margarita. Oh, yeah. All-inclusive. Oh, all many margaritas. Many margaritas. Yes. I think so it's uh, it low 90s with a humidity of about 95. Yeah. Some so rain in the forecast, though. Oh, that'll cool rain. us down. That's typical. Yeah. You know, it's a, it's, a, it's a tropical place. Yeah. So I um, hope you have fun. Thank you. Um, obviously, we're in the dog days of summer. As we stand now till week zero, we're approximately, I want to say, like 72, 71 days until mm -hmm. week zero kicks off. Um, and instead of just being hyper focused on Nevada, we're kind of get the lay of the land of the you know the entire Mountain West. Um, a lot of a lot of transactions, a lot a lot of changes around the conference. Um, not not a not a poster year last year for the for the conference, but we're going to talk about those changes. And specifically, we're going to kind of list um, the top three players or just three relevant players for each t uh, you know from each school okay. that will like you know help determine their success. We're going in alphabetical um, order or how are we doing this? Uh, so we'll we'll just go in order of standing. Oh, okay. um, so we're going to start with the Boise State Broncos. Obviously they they won the a late push but they won the Mountain West yeah. last season under coach Spencer Danielson after uh, Avalos was was fired because mm -hmm. you know a rough start. Um, just kind of what can you tell us about Boise State? Well, I mean, the expectations are always huge, and I think they're yeah. huge this year because of the college football playoff expanding. So, uh, you know, you see some early projections, 12 teams this year instead of four, and you see Boise State in there. So, you know, the standard is so big. If you don't win a Mountain West title and you don't get to a major bowl, it's not really called a successful season at Boise, and it's been a long time since they got to a bowl like that, 2014 Fiesta Bowl. Um, so th there are definitely a lot of expectations for Spencer Danielson. I don't think a lot of people thought when he was the, named the interim coach he'd be the full-time coach. Like you said, they did really well at the end of the season there. They won the Mountain West title. They did get blown out in their bowl game. But uh, really talented players. Uh, I've got seven Boise State players on my all-Mountain mm -hmm. West first team, so it's hard to cut it down to three. I will give you three. Ashton Genty, almost 1,400 yards, 19 touchdowns, running back, could be in the Heisman race, could be the first running back off the NFL draft board next year, phenomenal player. Andrew Simpson, he's a linebacker, 66 tackles last year, 16 tackles for loss. And I'm going to probably pronounce a lot of names incorrectly during this <laughs> uh, little show that we have. This may be the first one, so I'll try my best. Ahmed Hasienen, uh 16 and a half tackles for loss. 12 and a half sacks. Didn't do much his first couple years at Boise. Really exploded last year. So you could go a lot of different players on Boise. Those are my top three. Yeah. I, I, I listed a couple of players. I, I put Genty in there, obviously, just because of his, his pedigree. Um, and, you know, they've had a, a great, like, talent that came, comes at, like, they have, have come out of the backfield there. Mm -hmm. George Hulani um, was there last year. And it's just kind of funny. In the wing, waiting in the wings was Genty, uh, e even better running back um, there. But I listed two people that are of note, um, Malachi Nelson, the USC, USC transfer. Mm -hmm. That'll be, you know, uh, you're playing quarterback. That's a, that's a huge deal. So we'll see how he does. I know he has the pedigree, former five-star guy, went to USC, obviously sat behind Caleb Williams. We'll see how he does out here in the Mountain West to kind of revive uh, his image. He kind of reminds me of a, a DJ Ugolele, um, just in, in the sense of, like, you went to this big program, kind of scale back. Obviously, Ugolele went to Oregon State, and in this case, he's going to Boise State, which I'd argue, yeah, those programs actually match each other, Oregon State and Boise State. So that is similar. Um, another player I listed was Eric McAllister, a uh, now junior, uh, if not redshirt sophomore, um, receiver uh, for Boise State. Last year, he had 47 catches, 873 yards, and five touchdowns pretty good. in his action. So pretty good. Um, last year, Boise State, middle of the pack defense in the, in the Mountain West. Um, and then just, just on paper, you listed some defensive standouts. Um, but it seems like 
this might be another uh, offensive powerhouse team in the Mountain West. So. Yeah, I mean, their defense had been really good until last year. I think that's where Andy Avalos was doing a good job. He's a defensive-minded coach. Um, yeah. You know, so is Spencer Danielson. So that defense does have to be probably top 30 in the nation to be able to get that, uh, you know, college football playoff berth. It generally has been. Yeah, last year they took a pretty big step backward. Um, you know, you saw that game against Washington, the season opener, and they're – Secondary was absolutely torched. Now you kind of learned it was because Washington was really good as really good. well. <laughs> but, you know, Boise State's used to having one of the best defenses in the nation. They didn't last year. They got to get back to that standard, not only to win the Mountain West, but to actually become a national program again. Yep. All right. So we'll see how they do this upcoming season. But we'll move on. Time's limited. So we'll go on to San Jose State. Um, they have a new coach, head coach, Ken. I I'm, I'm, might butcher this, um, but it's Ni U Ma. So the key on this is just to say it like you know how it's pronounced. Yeah. Uh, if you go slow, even if you said it right, people are going to think that you said it wrong. Yeah. You could just say the former Navy head coach. The former Navy head coach. Not going to run the triple option, so that'll yeah. be interesting to watch. And they've got a couple of really good wide receivers. So actually of my top three players, two are wide receivers. One's Nick Nash. He was actually the starting quarterback for the team. And then that transition into wide receiver, went into the portal this offseason, ended up staying with the program. Um, he had 728 receiving yards, eight touchdowns last year. The other one, Justin Lockhart, began his career at Nevada. He was actually preseason All-Mountain West last year, unfortunately suffered an injury, didn't play during the entire season. So, um, you know, those are two pretty good wide receivers. They don't have a lot of answers at, at quarterback, though. So I think that's going to be interesting to see how their pass game evolves as Coach Ken, we'll call him from Navy, uh, moves over to, you know, a more traditional system, doesn't run that triple option. My third play. Uh, Sanei Toia, 17 tackles for loss, seven and a half sacks in his career. He's a defensive lineman. I actually did listen to the pronunciation on the website. It seems like the last name is a lot longer than how I just pronounced it, but that's how it's uh, listed on the roster. But one of the better um, defensive linemen in the entire Mountain West. Yeah, I, I think they have an interesting roster. Obviously, uh, Shepin Cordero leaves uh, kind of a coveted transfer guy there. Um, They'll have like a new quarterback right now. Jay Butterfield is the like the incumbent, but again, they have a bunch of young quarterbacks that can easily step in and fill that void. Um, now, when you think of San Jose State, you're thinking of uh, like you know you're, you're thinking of uh, you know receivers, but in this case, you know I, I think uh, you know Ken is not going to kind of depart too far from the running game. Um, so you know it won't be quite the triple option. But I think running backs will play, play a huge role in his offense. Um, Floyd Chalk is a is a guy that they got from, you know, the just the smaller school ranks. But he is in charge of replacing uh, Kyrie Robinson, uh, a really talented running back that had well over a thousand yards last season. So, I think you know a lot of it will be put on this guy's plate. But we'll see. Um, I think it might be a totally different look. But mm. uh, honestly, you take a, a a dog out of the triple option. You know, like, and you put him in a new environment. It's kind of kind of revert back to that. Um, you know, like hit what he knows. Yeah, it'll be <laughs> interesting to see how that offense evolves. That's a so, you know, it's a fairly big rebuild, and that's a program yeah. that you know has been pretty good the last couple of years, and has had some peaks and valleys. But you know, it's one of the more difficult jobs in the Mountain West. I feel like it is. It, um, I'd say they're probably more limited than, than what Nevada has to work with. as a, as a Yeah, I mean, you're recruiting the Bay Area, which is nice, yeah. but you're also going against Cal and Stanford, so you're yeah. kind of the number three school in your one little region. But um, they've had some spike years. I mean, they've been ranked in the top 25, and they've won a Mountain West title more recently, and Nevada's done either of those two things. So I think Nevada's probably a better job, but if you look at recent results, Mountain West era, the last 10 years, San Jose State's had more highs. They have. They have. Um, we'll move on um, to UNLV mm -hmm. under head coach Barry Odom. Um, probably the program's la best year last year at nine and five, fell just short obviously of, of winning the Mountain West, um, but a talented, talented team that has uh, some some good playmakers. Obviously, um, they lost their their quarterback last year to to USC mm -hmm. this year. Um, so some really shuffling, but there's some talented players. Yeah, uh, Jaden Maeva did transfer to USC. <laughs> Probably isn't even going to start there, but, you know, wanted to go to a bigger school. I've got six UNLV players on my All-Mountain West first team, so a lot to pick from. I think, obviously, wide receiver Ricky White the third. He's a transfer from Michigan State. Last year at UNLV, almost 1,500 yards and eight touchdowns. He's got to be on there. I think he's a potential NFL player. Offensive lineman Tiger Shanks, partially because he's very good and partially because his name is Tiger Shanks, and that's a very cool name. <laughs> and then also my third one, Jackson Woodard. Uh, Wolfpack fans know him. He had a really big interception in the red zone in the Fremont Cannon game last year. 
only interception of the year kind of helped turn that game around kind of you know stemmed a lot of uh, Nevada's momentum but he was a transfer who came with Barry Odom from Arkansas mm -hmm. 116 tackles nine tackles for loss last season so one of the better linebackers in the Mountain West those are my top three yeah, those are good. That's a good list. I, I also had Woodward. Um, obviously, Ricky White is a you know a great name to 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 know in college football. Um, 1,400 yards last year, eight touchdowns. Um, scorched Nevada when they played. Um, so a great, you know, off like a potentially good offensive team. We'll see how they take a step uh, on defense because because Odom is is you know more of a defensive guy. Um, but I think it'll be another stack team uh, down south there in Vegas. Um, let's move on to Air Force uh, under head coach Troy Calhoun. Um, yeah, he's been there. He's a, he's a long time, worth. like two so, decades. Yeah. Kind of hard to find returning players, though. This is the yes. <laughs> least returning production of 134 FBS programs. So uh, I had to throw a kicker in there, of course, Ooh. because you didn't have a ton of returning production. Matthew DePore. The Mountain West is a really good kicking league. Yeah. I mean, part of it's the elevation, the altitude you're playing at, but one of the better kickers, uh, probably the best returning kicker in the Mountain West. Uh, running back Dylan Carlson, more of a fullback, I guess. You know, running back, fullback in that offense, kind of the same thing. Ran for 483 yards, two touchdowns last year. He's going to step into a much bigger role. Like, this guy's going to run for 1,000 yards if he stays healthy. And then defensive lineman Peyton Zadorik, 16 and a half tackles for loss, 10 sacks in his two seasons as an active player. So a really good defensive lineman for Air Force. So while the names, sometimes they're unfamiliar because yeah. they don't have transfers who come in. They're on a strict four-year schedule. There's not a lot of redshirting that goes on there. That system is so good that you have to feel like Air Force is still going to be a contender despite having so many losses from last season. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like the, you know, you play for the, the, the symbol on the front instead of the name on the back, right? Uh, that's like that embodies Air Force football and the triple option. So it's, you know, like every year it's plug and play. Um, it's funny because last year a fullback and, you know, Emmanuel Michelle uh, ended up leading the team in rushing. <laughs> <laughs> when are you going to see that in this day and age? Yeah. Right? I mean, he's, he's, he's part fullback, part ha halfback, obviously. Yeah. Um, but the team lists him as a fullback, mm -hmm. obviously. Um, but that, that is interesting. It's a throwback to the 2000s in the NFL when, when fullbacks are, were running around, you know. So Yeah. I, 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 I don't do know what the that. differentiation yeah. point is between a fullback and a tailback in that offense. but uh, Yeah, because it's their alignment usually. Yeah. But, but they're yeah. going to carry the ball a lot, whether you're a fullback, a quarterback, right. or a running back in that offense. <laughs> yeah, so passing, not much of a factor on that team, all running. Um, so, yeah, we'll move to, to Wyoming, who is under head coach Jay Sauvel. Um, you know, he's a, he's a previously serving defensive coordinator. How do, how do you assess this Wyoming team? He used to, he made their um, past few, few years of success, you know, largely under that, like, talented defense that they had. Yeah, I mean, Craig Bowles is a really good coach. This is a guy who got him, like, six or seven straight years of bowl eligibility, um, you know, if you discount the, the COVID year. So they get the most out of their talent there, and it'll be interesting to see if that continues with the defensive coordinator stepping into the head position. Um, you know, Craig Bull obviously did a great job in North Dakota State as well. They didn't have as many transfers this offseason. That's been a problem with that program. If They developed a lot of good players and then lost them to transfer. So I don't think it's going to be, you know, a, a rebuild, whereas some of these other first year head coaches they got a lot of work ahead of them whether it's Jeff Choate at Nevada Sean Lewis at San Diego State Coach Ken uh, at San Jose State those are things that are probably going to take more years I think Wyoming has a much better shot of being bull others will be in toward the top of the Mountain West so my top three players offensive lineman Jack Walsh interior lineman he was a pro football focused first team uh, all Mountain West player last year running back Harrison Whaley um, he was a transfer from Northern Illinois who joined the program last year right around 950 yards and five mm -hmm. touchdowns they like to run the ball it's a defense and run kind of program and I expect it to say the same yeah and then you look at that defensive line you could pick a lot of defensive players Jordan Bertagal Nole so I didn't say that very well so Jordan so slow down Jordan B yeah. uh, 23 <laughs> tackles for loss 10 and a half sacks um, in his career so a very very strong player as well but yeah that that defense is historically one of the best in the Mountain West, and it has to be because in that kind of weather, in that kind of recruiting terrain, I mean, I guess they did have Josh Allen, but you're not going to get a guy who's going to be thrown for like 3,500, 4,000 yards. That's just not how that system is going to work. So they yeah. got to be able to run the ball, and they got to be able to play defense. Yes. Yeah. I mean, the strike goal with, with Allen, obviously a crazy story in itself, just coming from you know a small town out there near Fresno, California, and just making his way to Wyoming. Obviously, yeah. when you find a talent like that and – you know, you're going to change your offense and it's going to be totally pass centric. But, yeah, they're going to make their their, uh, you know, they're going to they're going to butter their bread with the, you know, a lot of their running games. So we'll see. We'll see that in uh, come fall. But um, let's move 
to uh, Josh Allen's former stomping grounds. We're going to talk about Fresno State, mm-hmm. uh, a team that has a lot of lofty expectations. I'd I'd say you know they've they have had a, a lot of success over the years. Um, they are led by Jeff Tedford. Um, so just tell us about what Tedford and and Fresno. Looks I mean, he's like a really good coach. They did fall apart at the end of last year, though. I mean, that was a team that was in the top twenty-five. It was a team that many thought was going to win a Mountain West championship for the second straight season. But they've won a couple Mountain West titles under Jeff Tedford. Um, you know, obviously Kalen DeBoer came through that program as offensive coordinator, and then over to Washington now at Alabama. So yeah, it's a really strong program. I mean, this is one of the elite programs in the Mountain West. I think they have a potential to win a Mountain West championship this year. And I think um, partially it's because they have an experienced quarterback, which this league really doesn't have. So my three top players for Fresno State, I'll start with Mikey Keene. He's a transfer from UCF. He was Fresno State starter last year, 18 and eight as a starting quarterback at the college level. So that's a great win percentage. Uh, I'm going to stay on the offensive side for all three of my picks, running back Malik Sherrod, 966 yards, 10 touchdowns last year. He really had a coming out party and they've got, uh, you know, really talented the skill position players on offense. I think this is going to be the best offense in the Mountain West or certainly in the top two or three. And then let's give some love to the offensive linemen. Most Vavao, second team, all Mountain West, right guard. Um, you're not good on offense if you don't have a good offensive line, and Fresno mm. State usually has a good offensive line. Yeah, uh, and a talented pool out there in the Central Valley of, of good players. Um, so, yeah, it's no surprise that they can field good players and year in, year out, just have, like, you know, players that, that do end up making it to the NFL. Obviously, De- Devontae Adams, uh, you know, comes from there. Carr, you just have a, a list of, like, really good and talented players that come from that region. So, no surprise there. They should be, you know, really talented next year. Um, we'll see. Uh, let's move on. We're going to Utah State out there in Logan, Utah. They hired Blake Anderson, a former Virginia head coach. Um, mm. Or was, no, that's New Mexico. Blake Anderson, uh, has he He's been there? been there a couple years. He's been there a couple years. I'm mixing it up with New Mexico. Sorry, yeah. folks. We'll talk about Blake Anderson uh, and the Utah State team. What, what, what are they yeah, doing? so Blake Anderson came from Arkansas State where he Arkansas was really State. good. Uh, you know, three years uh, with Utah State. They obviously won a Mountain West title in his first year, and that was a, a huge accomplishment to be able to do that because the year before they were absolutely terrible in 2020. So, um, you know, last couple of years they've made bowls, but they basically lose to every bowl caliber team that they, they play. So mm-hmm. they're beating the bad teams. They're losing to the good teams. Can they take that next step? They were uh, really good on offense last year. And, you know, a lot of changes at quarterback. They're two top quarterbacks left the team after spring camp and they transferred. So they'll have to replace those guys. So we don't have a quarterback on our list. We got Jalen Royals. He had more than a thousand uh, receiving yards last year. He's a wide receiver, 15 receiving touchdowns. That was a school record. We've got uh, athlete Micah Davis. He was a transfer from Air Force who joined Utah State last year. Mostly a wide receiver, does some punt returns, does some kick returns. And then Ike Larson, who's one of the best defensive backs in the Mountain West. He's a safety. Uh, Only two years in the program as an active player, but eight interceptions last year. He had 103 tackles. Um, he was a freshman All-American a couple years ago, so he's a, a really good defensive back. Yeah, uh, that defense was making plays last year when when Nevada went out there. Obviously, Nevada's offense wasn't <laughs> put it lightly; it wasn't that good last year. Um, but yeah, their defensive line and the both the second day were making plays in that game. So that's what stood out when we were watching them last year. Um, but we'll move on uh, to old friend Timmy Chang out there in Hawaii mm-hmm. um, now. There's some Nevada players that, that have transferred over. Um, obviously, Chang has deep roots with the Nevada program. Um, was he in year three or four? Yeah, the, year three. Year so three. they went from three wins to five wins, maybe aiming for a bowl this year. The schedule's not quite as difficult. Uh, yeah, Deion Washington from Nevada, defensive yeah. lineman. I didn't have him on my list, but he's a very talented player. I thought he would be a little bit more impactful for Nevada last year. Um, you know, was kind of a reserve guy, but um, I think that's a really good addition for Hawaii. As I said, not on my list, though. My number one is Stephen McBride. He's a wide receiver. He transferred in from Kansas prior to last year. Uh, more than 1,000 yards, nine touchdowns last season. Uh, Braden Shager, the uh, quarterback, um, if you just look at what he's done against Nevada, he's the best quarterback in the nation. He's been awesome against Nevada. Just inconsistent. A lot of turnovers. He's got to curb those. Obviously, that's a pass-friendly system. Um, can you make the big plays without giving up the big turnovers? is the big question for him. I think he's had like five or six games with three interceptions or more. So, um, you know, he can have some real duds, but he can also look really, really strong as well. So um, he's a guy who went into the portal, ended up coming back to the program. And then we're going to go with another offensive lineman. Uh, Sergio Musau. So uh, I've got a lot of offensive linemen. I love my offensive linemen. Got to show some love there. Um, obviously, Nevada used to 
used to make their, uh, you know, they found a lot of success with their offensive linemen with, under Chris Alton in the Union. So it's important. You know, you got to show love there. Um, let's move on to Fort Collins, uh, old friend Jay Norvell. This is a talented team. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, Jay's been out there for, for uh, you know, a few years. Um, really good players, you know, at the, especially, you know, at the receiver position um, with Torrey Horton, uh, who could potentially be a day two draft pick uh, in 2024 uh, or 25. Yeah, 25. Um, just tell us about the, the Rams team that is really looking to turn a corner <laughs> on year three of, uh, you know, under Jay Norvell. Yeah, I mean, it's similar to Tim Timmy Chang. They went from yeah. three wins up to five wins. They actually yeah. lost at Hawaii in their regular season finale. If they won that game, they would have been in a bowl. So it's been a slower build at Colorado State than it was at Nevada when he took over the Wolfpack job. Um, they are really talented. I mean, they, they even last year, they have a lot of high-level talent, maybe just not quite the depth. Um, but, you know, you look at Mohamed Kamara getting drafted last mm -hmm. year. He's a defensive end. And I think Torrey Horton will be drafted next season. He's a guy who... Could have went to a Power 5 program and probably got, you know, three four $400,000, but ended up yeah. staying with Jay Norvell in the Air Raid. Left Nevada with Jay Norvell to go to Colorado State. Two years at Colorado State, 2,267 yards and 16 touchdowns. He reminds me a lot of Romeo Dobbs. Um, you know, I think this is a guy who's going to be an impact player in the NFL. I think he's got the speed. He's got the height. He's got the competitiveness. He's got the hands. Another guy who's a potential NFL player, Jack Howell. He's a safety. His dad played in the NFL. Uh, won a Super Bowl with Tampa Bay Bucks on that uh, Warren Sapp, John Gruden team. He's got 286 career tackles, five interceptions in three seasons. And my number three player is uh, Braden Fowler Nicolosi, mm -hmm. um, the quarterback. Uh, won the starting job early last season over Clay Millen. Both those guys were either committed or started in Nevada's program as well. He also has had some turnover issues. He had at least one interception in 10 of 12 games. So if he can cut down those turnovers and still stay as productive in the the, the deep pass game, um, I think he, he can have a very strong season. I think he could be a contender for Mountain West Offensive Player of the Year. Uh, you know, uh, for for Fowler Nicolosi, it's, you know, like it's a similar arc I could see for him compared to Carson Strong. Obviously different play styles, but I think last year, you know, he was so young getting that experience. Uh, that will serve him well. I think uh, he'll end up being one of the better Mountain West uh, quarterbacks uh, in the conference. Um, now let's move. Actually, one second. Draw back. If you know, if you're looking for an interesting matchup, come early, early college football season. I think Colorado and Colorado State are playing again. Yeah, I don't think it's yeah. going to have the hype that it had last year. This one's yeah. going to be in Fort Collins, but obviously Jay Norvell and Deion Sanders had some words back right. and forth, and then it was a great game on the field, double overtime win for Colorado. So you look at Colorado State's history, they are losing every single one of their rivalry games, whether it's Wyoming, whether it's Air Force, whether it's Colorado. Yeah. That's happened really the last, like, three coaches. So Jay needs to start winning some of those rivalry games. And I think they're in a bowl this year. Can they compete at the top of the Mountain West? I think that's the more interesting question. That is interesting. Um, let's stay right here in Reno. Uh, we're going to talk about Nevada under new coach Jeff Cho. Mm -hmm. uh, now, a lot of roster turnover with these, uh, you know, like past few months. So obviously, you lose your top receiver in Dale Von Campbell to the, to the transfer portal. Um, the quarterback room stays put. Uh, obviously, a uh, new look running back room. Just tell me about some players that Nevada is going to have. That well, I'm going with the returning guy, Drew Watts. I think yeah. he's one of the best middle linebackers in the Mountain West. A little bit undersized, but really great instincts, really fast on the ball. He can play sideline to sideline. He can get in the backfield. He had a lot of fumble recoveries last year. I don't know if that's a skill or if that's luck, but uh, whenever you're a part of turnovers, that's big. I think that's a guy who could potentially play at the next level, maybe more as like a safety than as a middle linebacker, given the size. But, uh, you know, that's one of the big guys that Jay uh, – when you, when you look at Jay Norvell was the guy who recruited him, played for Ken Wilson, now playing for Jeff Choate. He's been loyal to the program, and that's really cool to see. Uh, Isaiah World, another guy who came here under Jay Norvell. He's an offensive tackle, left tackle. He actually was mostly a basketball player down in San Diego as a high school guy. Um, was kind of thrown into the fire earlier than he should have been, but that will benefit him now that he's a multi-year starter. It's going to be his third year. As a starter, I think he can be one of the better, um, you know, uh, exterior offensive linemen in the Mountain West. And he's going to have to be because Nevada's offensive line has been pretty poor really the last decade. So um, he's going to have to be a big player for Nevada. And I'm going to go with the transfer for my third spot, Keaton Crawford. He's a, a transfer from Texas. Um, had an opportunity to go to the East-West Shrine game and potentially try and make the NFL last year as a special teams guy. Mm -hmm. Wants to prove that he could play more safety at the next level. So he's coming to Nevada to play safety. Obviously, he'll do some stuff on special teams. Teams, but of the newcomers to transfers, I would guess he probably has the biggest impact. Yeah, uh, you know, I, certainly a next level talent. Uh, you know, just at the special teams level, uh, um, but he'll be looking to make an impact on, on defense this year. So 
we'll see. Uh, you know, completely new roster, but there are some spots that you know might might blossom. Obviously, the quarterback room is a, is an entire thing with Chava Purdy and Brendan Lewis. Uh, Lewis will probably end up being the uh, week zero starter against SMU, uh, but we'll see uh, as fall camp goes along. That obviously is here in the next month and a half or so. So that should be interesting. Um, now let's move down to Albuquerque. Uh, I'm going to talk about Bronco Mendenhall. This is the, the coach I was uh, mixing There you up. go, Fantastic. from Virginia. Before from Virginia. at BYU. Yes. Yeah, he's a really good coach. He basically yeah. – you know, resigned at Virginia, said he had kind of been worn out, but uh, apparently not worn out too much because, you know, not not too long down the road, coming back to New Mexico. It's a place he's really familiar with. He's a very good coach. It's just a difficult job, and he didn't inherit much. Like, finding three high-level players to highlight, not the easiest task with New Mexico, although I really do like their quarterback, Devin Dampier. We saw him uh, play at Nevada last year at Mackey Stadium. He was kind of like their backup change of pace. He would come in for mm. running plays, so he's got to be able to prove he could throw the ball, but he actually, his numbers throwing the ball last year were really good, and this is a young guy. He's got three more years, um, so he could really grow into one of the better players in the Mountain West at that quarterback position. He's a guy Nevada actually went after and offered a scholarship, and um, you know I think he could be a really good player this year, and he's going to have to be for this program. Uh, defensive lineman Kyler Drake, um, six tackles for loss, uh, three and a half sacks last year. And then a transfer from USC, Dejon Benton, um, was actually fairly productive for USC last year. He's an interior defensive lineman. Um, they got a lot of pretty solid transfers, a lot of guys who come from higher degree programs. So we'll see how Bronco does. I know the over-under win total, according to the sports books, just one and a half for this team, though. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, that's that's pretty hard not to hit one and a half yeah because you get to play an fcs team and they get to play new mexico state which is usually an fcs kind of program mm -hmm. although you know last couple of years they've been pretty good yeah i'll take the over on one and a half but not by much yeah that's fair uh new mexico typically is a, is a program that struggles but you know it's good get with bronco i think you know and bronco obviously there was re reports that there was interest in the job here so mm -hmm. that'll be interesting when you know i, I don't think they're not on the schedule this year right new mexico Battle of the Wolves? I don't think so, no. no. no? Okay. Well, down the road, we'll see uh, the Choke versus Mendenhall. Yeah. Bowl, so. um, but let's uh, let's wrap it up. We're going to go to uh, San Diego State. This is an interesting hire. Um, Sean Lewis, a former offensive coordinator at Colorado. I think that's a like, potentially – you know, lead to um, some tra changes uh, for the Aztecs. Obviously, they yeah. lost their longtime coach and um, bringing in a young offensive mind. That could, and he's yeah. been an FBS head coach before, yeah. so I think that's a really useful uh, thing to have in his arsenal. Yeah. They are going to have to change their approach. Like, they were really successful running the ball and playing defense, but the offense was always – um so constipated like they couldn't throw the ball and unless they were an amazing running team like with dj pumphrey or with richard penny they couldn't generate enough to help that defense in that special team so um yeah sean lewis is more known as an offensive coach he's going to open it up a little bit so that's a transition you go from a run first team mm -hmm. to more of a balanced team who wants to be able to throw the ball usually that takes a couple of years they lost a lot of talent probably more than any school to the transfer portal so that hurts they did bring in uh, several nice players as well. If you want to look at my top three list, running back Jalen Armstead, um, you know, didn't get a ton. You know, wasn't like the lead back last year, but I think he could emerge as a really good player. Uh, wide receiver Makahi Shaw, he was the offensive player of the year last year. You look at the numbers, it's like 35 catches, 450 yards. Again, this doesn't blow you away, but the offense, you know, wasn't really great scheme-wise. So maybe these guys blossom a little bit. And then a defensive lineman, Tupu Alahu, um, four tackles for loss, three sacks last year. Mm. So the roster is not as talented as it usually is. This is right. one of the better programs in the Mountain West, getting people to the NFL. Mm -hmm. So I would say in year one, if Sean Lewis can get to a bowl, I think that's a major accomplishment. But they also have a brand new stadium. And two years in, attendance went down a lot yeah. last year. Yeah. And that, that was an expensive stadium to build. They got to get people excited about San Diego State football. And the easiest way to do that is by playing really fun offense. Yep. So it certainly was a fun offense watching that out, out in Boulder last last year. So we'll see if it translates. Um, but this this man has to get a, a, a physical. So we're gonna we're gonna yeah. get out of here. Um, we were talking about constipation on offense. Nevada was constipated. Uh, Hopefully you're not constipated. So. No, we'll, I don't we'll think. Get the yeah, they don't you know? think they check that at the physical. <laughs> okay. It should be fairly routine, but we we get a nice little discount on our health insurance if we get a physical. So yep. it's incentive to go get checked up. If you don't get an incentive to go get a physical, you should still go get a physical just to make sure everything is running okay. But yes. Yeah. It's some, a reminder. <laughs> some good lists here. I would say Boise State's the most talented team in the yep. Mountain West, followed by UNLV. 
followed by Colorado State, followed by Fresno State, and then Wyoming and Utah State right after them. Yep. That, that's my list of most talented teams in the Mountain yeah. West. Yeah, it's a, it should be an interesting year in the Mountain West. Obviously, the inclusion of Oregon State and Washington State just, just on the schedule will – We'll add some uh, a nice little change in, mm. in the middle of the season. So we'll see. Uh, obviously, we're like a month and a half until, until fall camp. But uh, it's always good to talk Mountain West football with you, Chris. Thank you for having me. All right. We'll see you guys next time on Inside the Dead.